This is Startup Storefront. According to the 2020 UCLA Hollywood Diversity Report, Latinos made up 18% of the population, yet received only 4.6% of movie roles in 2019. To put it simply, even though Latinos make up almost a fifth of the population, there's a massive gap in representation on the silver screen. There is, however, a growing movement within the industry to change that. Today, we have the pleasure of talking to a leader of this movement, actress Justina Machado. You might recognize her from her roles in Jane the Virgin, Six Feet Under, or even Dancing with the Stars. In this episode, we discuss why she didn't call herself an actress until she moved to LA, why she didn't feel financially stable until she was 40, and the outrage the Latino community felt when James Franco was cast as Fidel Castro. And thank you to Cat Footwear for sponsoring this episode. They're a premier shoe company that empowers builders and doers to reframe the world to create something more meaningful. Quiet on set, we are rolling in three, two, one. Welcome to the podcast. On today's show, we're talking to Justina Machado. Thank you for joining. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. For the small amount of people who don't know who you are. Yeah. How do you introduce yourself? What do you do? I'm an actress. That's all I ever say. Yeah. That's a yeah. good way. Yeah. What, yeah. what made you want to <laughs> first get into it? What made you want to get into the world of acting? I don't know. I just kind of fell into it, to be honest. I mean, I was in Chicago, and I was, I'm born and raised in Chicago. And I was working at a bank. I had just graduated from high school. I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. My best friend's mother, who unfortunately just passed away uh, a couple weeks ago, was an agent and called me. She was the first Latina agent in Chicago. It was called Salazar and Navas, and her name was Mirna Salazar. And uh, she called me up one day and she said, there's a play at Latino Chicago Theater. They're looking for a young Puerto Rican girl that's 16 years old. I know that you're not an actress, but I think you have great stage presence. And I was so desperate because I didn't know what I wanted wow. to do with my life. I went and I never stopped. What do you think she saw in you? Well, I was... Big personality? I mean, from I, yeah. our two minutes together. Yeah. <laughs> I see it. Yeah. It's there. I was also a dancer, so she would see me ah. dance back in the day, yeah. So okay. it was that. But then you yeah. do it. Then you did it. You did the I role. I did it. I did the role. And then 16, you, you... you're having no, an I existential... Was oh, I was 18. But even then, you're having an existential crisis, like a you know, quarter life, midlife crisis yeah, at 18 years old. Yeah, because you're like, what are you gonna, I yeah. mean, come on, don't we all? When you graduate from high school, you get... And then when your parents don't have money, like I didn't grow up with any money, so it's like there was no money to go to school. You know, they didn't know anything about loans, you know, like in, like me growing up was literally working class and, you know, I'm first generation. My parents are from Puerto Rico and it was just like, keep your head down, work and buy property. They were obsessed with buying property. That's a, you know? that's a good tip. That's yeah. a good tip, but they didn't care about school. Yeah. <laughs> right. You should care about school a little, a little bit, bit, you know? Yeah, it should bit. go hand in hand. It should go hand it in hand. It worked out for you. So I'm just yeah. saying, it maybe, maybe not so much. <laughs> exactly. But, it worked yeah, out. Prior to that. So, yeah, so, so uh, yeah, I was having a, a crisis. Absolutely. So then yeah. you do the role, you love it, you fall in love, and then does she say, okay, cool, let's start casting you into all these things, or are you, well, or maybe the you theater, don't love it. The, the theater, theater does yeah. that. So the theater, the artistic director, his name is Juan um, Juan Ramirez, and he was like my mentor. How big is this community of Latinos in, in Chicago? Chicago at this time? Oh my God, it was the, huge. In the acting theater. Oh, I, I don't know, because I kind of stayed in a bubble at the Latino Chicago theater. And then I started to go out of the bubble. But he just kept inviting me to be in other plays. And I remember he would say, do you think you're an actress now? Because I thought it was so weird. I was like, you don't say you're an I thought that was so out of corny, you know what I mean? Because in my world, nobody was an actor. And everybody would be like, oh, yeah, right, you're an actor. I mean, I grew up in the inner city of Chicago. So it was like a joke. <laughs> so I didn't start calling myself an actor until I left Chicago and I moved to New York. And did you do like trainings or, or workshops, acting sessions? I just did play after play after play at the Latino Chicago Theater. And you had it? You didn't have any fear? You were just like no. on it? I've never really had a lot of Re fear. Rehearsing lines, all that stuff? Yeah. Memorizing lines? I'm yeah. sweating just thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> but oh I couldn't do goodness. what you do. See, that's the thing. What do I? You know? Talk to people? No, I mean like whatever you do. Like aren't you like a, a real estate a, developer? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, I couldn't yeah. do that. Yeah, I'm pleased. I've been trying to you. buy a house forever. And, and I'm like, oh, I get overwhelmed every two seconds. Don't buy your home. Buy your office. Buy your studio. That's the move. See, buy look your at studio. That. See how you think like that? Invest yeah. in property. Like that, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like this. Welcome this is our that. studio. Yeah. So there you go. See, I don't think like that. All right. So then at some point, this becomes real to you and your <laughs> yeah. friends and your family. Yes. And then you get, what's the first show? What's the thing? Do you move to LA? Are you still in I Chicago? I moved to New York. I never okay, came. I didn't come to LA. I went to New York first. And and then I got a job from New York. And then I came to LA. So I was a pilot. 
You guys know what a pilot yeah, yeah. is, right? <laughs> of course, yeah. No, no, I don't know. I, I thought you said I a company town here. We were, <laughs> I thought you said I was a pilot. And I was like, oh, what? It was, a pilot. <laughs> it was a pilot. All right, that's so, the first time I came to LA. So you didn't go to, so you went to New York then because of your theater background and New York well, Because I wanted to be a Broadway town? star. Yeah, that's what I exactly. wanted to do. Okay. I want, because I sing and I dance and I wanted mm -hmm. to do that. Yeah. So, I mean, of course I wanted to do film, but I never thought about television. I just thought New York. I'm from Chicago. The next thing is New York. Los Angeles, I didn't like. You know, I had been flown out here a few times to audition. Nobody walked. It was crazy. I didn't know what was going on. People were crossing in the middle of the street. Like, you know, there's no public transportation. So I was I was intimidated by Los when Angeles. When you moved to New York, did you move with family? No, or by myself. By yourself? Yeah. On and the then... Lower East Side, second in 1994, on second between B and C. Oh, my goodness. And it was bad back then. It was yeah. real bad. Yeah. yeah. So then what happened? You're in New York. So then you do I got, a pilot. Uh, it worked out? Yeah, I did a play in New York, and then I did a bunch of jobs and commercials, and then I got the pilot in L.A., and then I came out to L.A., and I never left. What was the move to L.A. like? Well, thank God two of my best friends were already here from Chicago. Okay. So I lived with them on Lanewood, right by the Chinese So you theater. all lived together? Yeah, the three of us, we slept in one bed. Three That's girls, hilarious. like we all, yeah, we had a one bedroom. I we still slept do that, one. by the way. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Yes, yes. This is like every startup. So my, the, the first company I, I started, it was three guys in one bedroom. Really? Yeah, we had a big mattress in the living room. That was like our office. Right. All the computers were there. And then I had the luxury, I had my own room. Okay. But it was just the mattress on the floor. I mean, it was bad. And we shared the same and car, too. And it smelled too. like dudes. <laughs> it was like, nah, these guys weren't too cleanly. Right, right. Oh, right. Well, Wait, so did you clean. have to coordinate your auditions then, if you're sharing the same car? Well, it, it was my friend Laura's car, so we had to yeah. do whatever Laura wanted to do. So, mm. you know, like if we had to wait an hour. We waited an hour for Laura to pick us up. But, yeah, it was a stick shift, and it was, uh, which nice. is a pain in L.A., and it was like a hills. pickup truck, and oh, that was yeah. embarrassing when you're a young. Are you still lady. friends with them? Yeah, Laura and Margie, absolutely. Are they in? Are, where are they now? Well, Laura got. I, we were literally here five months, and Laura got ER and was on ER for fifteen oh. years. Oh wow! And That's Margie moved back to Chicago. Yeah. This game is hard, though, right? Yes, it is. Okay, let's yeah. talk about the hard parts of like okay. auditioning or just the things sure. that. Right, because it's a success story today. But yeah. in the moment, you're taking, you're going to New York. That must have been crazy. I Latino, loved it. Latino communities are tight. They're probably yeah. like, when she's coming back, they probably miss you. Then you go to LA. Yeah. Right, same yeah. thing. Right, you're dealing with all these fears, anxieties, or maybe not. Maybe you're just like, no, so it always, you're, you just they, had it. But they never go away, fear and anxiety. Right, True. It doesn't go away. And also, uh, you just it's more than talent in this business. You just have to have perseverance, and you have to really believe in yourself, and you have to. I always said. They Hollywood can't do anything that wasn't happened that didn't happen to me in the streets of Chicago. You know what I mean? Like I was pretty tough growing up in Chicago, so it's it just built you. yeah, yeah, kind of you know. And I also went to six different schools by the time I was ten, so I was used to being the you know. I'm sure I have a lot of that, PTSD about it. <laughs> that perpetual change. I heard I have school a lot of, of PTSD. Hard knocks. Yeah. yeah, I kind of had school of the hard knocks. Yeah. So what's your first role in L.A.? What was the My thing that hit? My first was a, a show called, the pilot called Second Noah. And it was with James Marsden, actually. We played brother and sister. We were both adopted. But then the pilot got picked up and I got fired from the pilot. So I had never experienced anything Does like that. Does that happen? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. You get, you get You get recast. Yeah. That happens. So I got fired from when it went to series, I got fired. And I remember I got recast. I guess I should say that. And that was super devastating. But I just kept going. I just kept I mean, going. That's a roller coaster. You think, OK, pilots got picked up. I'm I'm yeah. riding this wave. And then the next thing you know, you're you're you're, you're not in. No, you're not and on you the have cart. To see it. You know what right. I mean? Because it, it, it stayed on the air for two years. And then after that, I was really stressed out thinking I would, the next thing after that was I did a movie with Sean Penn called She's So Lovely. What is that like? Uh, well, that was, I was terrified I was going to get fired because after that, you're like, oh <laughs> God, I'm going to get fired from yeah. everything. I was terrified. <laughs> and it was like late at night. And I don't I mean do, to laugh. I just think no, it's, this, like, it's funny. I'd be crying I, otherwise. So, I yeah. do remember that it was 19, like in the 95, I think. And it was shooting downtown. And I remember when I went there, this happened to me a lot when I first got here, like they always thought I was a background artist. Back then, they called them extras. So they never, they were always shocked that I actually had a speaking role. Why is that? Because I was Latina. So they were like, and even that day, they, when I went, there were all this, all these background artists, and I kept trying to talk to the AD and say, hi, where do I go? Where do? And she's right. like, sit there, sit there. And I'm like, wait, but I'm not. Shouldn't I have a trailer? Or? And uh, that happened to me a lot, mm -hmm. you know. Is it better now? 
I mean, because they know who I am. <laughs> I mean, is it better? It's better. It's not as good as it should be. I mean, what Latino shows do you see on the air? You know, you don't. Yeah, you, don't. you know, what yeah. Latino families do you see on the air? Why do you think that is? Like when you, from your perspective, as someone in, in right. sort of in the game, why do you, I'm sure it's complicated, but just like. It's complicated. And I think that one of the things that people have to start, and not on this podcast, of course, because I'm here, but when people call me from certain news outlets and want to talk about it, they need to start asking the studios that question, not the actors that question. They just don't think we're viable. They just don't, they're, they're, not, they're not scared of us either because we don't make enough noise. And also- You mean like by viewership? By... Well, uh, well, we buy the most tickets, right. Latinos, uh, movie uh, tickets. You know, we consume so much media and yet we're not out there. Another thing that happens is that and, you know, this can go deep about how, you know, as a Latino people, we're, I just did a special about this on MSNBC. I just did a special called The Culture's Latina. Heard of that. <laughs> <laughs> no. I just did the special with, uh, and it was an amazing roundtable of all these women. And one of the things I said is that Latinos are not a monolith, you know, right. yet there's something inherently Latino about every single one of us. And I think there's a lot of infighting. You know, like they're like, oh, sure. well, you're Puerto Rican. You can't play. When I did one day at a time, there were people, there were Cubans mad that I was playing, you know, some Cubans, not all. I got a lot of, lot of love, you know, but there were some that were upset and it's just so silly. You know, it's like we're cutting each other off. And so I think that happens. And also, yeah, they, that's their excuse. Uh, the studios and the I, networks and all totally that other true. stuff. There's a perspective that I like about. So when I watch like um, Drink Champs or Puff Daddy or all these people, yeah. whenever they talk about what they own, they say we own it. And they're talking about we as a yes, collective yes. community. And you don't see this. No, not in our in community. In the Latin community no, in don't. any capacity. And it no. makes me sad. It makes me real sad too. When I bring people to like our breweries or the, the, the things we own, I'm like, this is ours. Like we own yeah. this. But even like I still see people's faces like they don't really under like what's he doing? Right yeah, now? yeah. Is he trying to, is he trying to trick me? Right. <laughs> is he trying to make me feel some kind of way? And I'm like, no, like I just want people to just say like by virtue of me looking like you or by virtue of you, like in your case, yeah. people can watch and see you. And so by virtue of the person watching and looking like you, it's an us thing. Now. I agree. That's we don't, the thing we don't, I we got to break there. that. We don't have it. No, we don't. But me, you know, I think a lot of us are trying to break it and talk about it and put it out there. It's just going to take a minute, I guess. What's your thing with like, weird. so James Franco gets all this heat for oh. getting that lead role. Is that a, is that a huge issue? John Leguizamo goes out. Yeah. It's ridiculous. It. Why is James Franco playing a Castro? Now, listen, I mean, Castro's no hero. You know what right, I mean? Right. Like, uh, not for me. I mean, I know there's certain people, you know, he, I don't care what anybody says. Look at what he did to his country. Look at that island. Look at these people. I mean, that man was, was a monster, you know? So, uh, so it's not like, yeah, I want to play Castro. <laughs> but at the same time, it's like, why James Franco? Uh, when, if, there's even, if there were even playing ground for all of us that we could do those things, then I'd be okay with it. But we can't. So that, uh, not that we can't, they don't allow it to happen. So it's ridiculous that James Franco is playing Castro. It's ridiculous he even said yes to that, you mm. know? So... I, I, I thought he was big, done after the whole like. Oh, that thing. I thought he was canceled. Yeah, thought, yeah. yeah. Well, apparently not because he's playing Castro. Not <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, not he, he and Seth enough. Rogen are, are split. I mean, they're, yeah, I love yeah. that Seth Rogen. I've yeah. never worked with him, but I just follow him. I think seems he's like a so great guy funny. all around. Yeah, he does actually. Super yeah. smart too. Mm -hmm. He is. Yeah. He knows what he's doing. Every time I watch him, I'm like this guy's dumb as hell. But then I'm like, yeah. wow, he just he could banger, banger, banger. Yeah, his energy is he's on a different thing. Yeah, so I'm I'm totally against that James Franco casting. I think it's I think it's sad. I think. It's Who would you sad. have wanted to see in that role? Oh, I don't even know, but I should know I, that there's, I go out there? there's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> they're wonderful Latino actors. You know yeah, what I mean? I yeah. don't know who the right person is. And don't give me this crap about, you know, he's got face. Yeah, he does look like him. But what? Like, we don't know how to right. do, we know make somebody how to look do like prosthetics somebody. Now. I didn't yeah. even know Jared Leto was in Batman. Right. I was like, that was him? Remember yeah. he played the penguin for like a yeah, second? I, I actually did not know that. That was Colin Farrell. Moment. I yes, I did he not did the new one. He was like the penguin. That was Colin Farrell. Oh, that's what I meant. Oh, shoot. Sorry. Jared Leto was in House You're of Gucci, right. and I didn't Colin recognize Farrell. him. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. oh, that's right. He was so good in House yeah, of Gucci. Yeah, I did not recognize, I didn't recognize him for him half either. the movie. That was a great character. So don't yeah. tell yeah. me you can't do it. You know, right. it's just so you. They're going to give you all these excuses because you know they're going to. They they probably needed him to greenlight the movie. That's probably what happened. But that has to change already, and it's ridiculous. You're probably right. When you were on, just go back to Sean Penn. Sure. So I was watching the Actors Guild. Tom Cruise is on there, and Tom has this thing where he learned it from some of the 
somebody he played with early on where it's like everyone on set just calls each other by their character name. Yeah. Is that a thing? Is that a real thing? Like That's so very fun. That's so funny that you that's hilarious because Nick Nick Cassavetes was the director of that. And I was we were rehearsing and Sean Penn didn't talk to me, but he came up to the <laughs> to the uh whatever, the ticket per thing that where I was supposed to be selling him tickets. And he's like, uh, what's your name? And I was like, Justina Machado. <laughs> and then the director goes, no, Justina, not your real name, your character's name. I was like, well, I didn't know that. Right. I didn't know he was right. improv He didn't, so, it's yes, thing. so he started thing. to improv. But it, but it, it stayed in the movie, you know, so I just, I just jumped on it and, and named myself because I always wanted to be named Carmen Rodriguez. I think that's such a beautiful name. It's a very Puerto Rican yeah. name. You know it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I grew up in Springfield. Most of the Latinas in Springfield, Massachusetts, yeah. were all Puerto Rican. Oh my God, and really? So I just grew up like, like my best friend's name is Alan Rodriguez. Right. Played Rodriguez soccer is together. such a Puerto Rican name. Yeah. And so I was immersed in that culture. People thought I was Puerto Rican. Yeah. Because there's no, there's no other Latino in Massachusetts. Right. Then I moved to LA, everyone's calling me Mexican. Oh, and I'm me like, too. oh, I'll be all of it. I don't know. <laughs> I'll be all I'm of it. I'm here for it. Yeah. If I'm in Portugal, people go, oh, he's Portuguese. If I'm in Spain, I'm Spanish. I'm like, whatever. Right. Call me whatever you we'll want. Just, we'll go with it. After that movie, what was the next thing? Oh, God, that was such a long time ago. I think it might have been NYPD Blue, like for two seconds, <laughs> like a two second roll. And are you comfortable in, in terms of like from a money making perspective, or is it always like you make it, then you're terrified? And then, like, like do you money? ever, just in terms of acting, like, are you, do you ever feel stable or is it a constant game of, it's, it's a constant, I like feel a fishing. lot more stable now, yeah. but, but, um, I mean, I think I've been stable, but it took a long time to feel that way. How also, long? How oh long? my God, probably I didn't feel stable till I was like 40. That was a long time. I started doing it when I was 18, you know, so I didn't feel, and even though I owned, you know, my place and I owned, I didn't feel, well, also I didn't know how to deal with money. And I'm just, and I've just learned how to deal with money, you know, because when you don't grow up with it, you don't know what to do with it. And then you don't trust, you know, like, cause you hear all these stories. How did you go about navigating like, like Well, I had a business manager that I actually got a lean put on me when I was with him. So I was Oof. like, that's not the right Fired. business manager. Right, right. I was <laughs> going to say, that's that a lot of trust door. right there. That that was so, and then I, you know, and then I have a great guy now that made me do a lot of stuff that I didn't know about, you know? So, and now I ask questions because I think I was just embarrassed. So I didn't ask the questions and now I ask the questions. You yeah. Know? So now you feel stable. Now you're good. I do feel stable. Now I'm, I, I, I'm good. You know, I still like those phone calls still make me nervous those phone calls like it's my money and I get nervous about talking about it you know or with the guy that that uh, invests it, I get m nervous about it and I still have that so what do you invest in well I mean I don't really know um, you know like <laughs> like stuff that's um stuff that's safe Sure. That's all I know. Right, we're talking about like safe? stock, stock oh my God, I don't want to talk about this you're yeah. making me nervous what's I'm safe <laughs> I'm like, trying to think of what's safe I'm in today's like world. Index funds, uh, COVID, that's, COVID that's, vaccines. That's, well, by the way, hello. Of, well, not Dogecoin. No, what's yeah. that? Crypto. You're not <laughs> in crypto. Well, it's so funny because my girlfriend Treasuries. was trying to get us all to do that NFT. Is that still happening? Is that still popular? Uh, crypto winter. It's, it's, I would avoid that word. Yeah, okay. yeah, that's dipped. what I thought. Yeah, I didn't want to yeah. buy a stupid cartoon for $30,000 yeah, no. or something. Sorry. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yes. It was like I was like, "What? That's a lot of money! What for like a Some thing I own?" Some people spent millions on. I know I mean, that was a, look. See, that was as much as I was willing to, and yeah. I wasn't even going to do that. All of these entrepreneurs that come on the podcast are looking for a competitive edge. That's why we partnered with Athletic Greens. I ditched my vitamin C packets I was previously drinking in the morning, and I've never felt better. It's noticeably given me more energy and an optimized immune system. This is not my first go around with multivitamins. I used to take these capsules and they made me feel bloated and disgusting and I stopped taking them after about two weeks. When I tried AG1, none of that happened. I felt good, I felt all of the benefits with none of the negative side effects. I'm a big believer in this over capsules. It completely replaced my multivitamins. Whether you're on the tennis court or in business, you need to win. Put AG1 into your lifestyle. It's great for recovery, clarity, and alertness. You're going to start hitting winners, both in business and on the tennis court. Let's go. For less than $3 a day, you can reclaim your health with convenient daily nutrition. It's just one scoop and a cup of water. That's it. No need for a million different pills or supplements. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is giving you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash STS. Again, that is athleticgreens.com slash STS to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Did anybody see what you were doing and go, okay, I want to go, I want to I try acting? Did you... 
Like, uh, are there seeds within your family that they're maybe, or maybe they just brother, like. My brother's not an actor, but he's a fashion designer. He's actually designing, he and his partners, they've designed my dress for the Critics' Choice Award, for my MSC, MSNBC special, Three Latinos. And I think they're going to make something for me because uh, Norman Lear's 100th birthday celebration is September 8th. And uh, how long so did you work with Norman? It, uh, for uh, five years. So maybe you can answer a question for me sure. that I've always had. Uh, when you wear a dress on, on like a red carpet and like, you know, people ask. Nick has always wearing? had this question. That should okay. be enough for you to worry. I'm, I'm curious about <laughs> like the, the, the bump because like you, you hear you get the question like, who are you wearing? And then like for you, you could say, oh, I'm wearing my uh, brother's so, yeah, exactly. uh, line. And so Tri like collective. your brother can tell you like, oh, we, we got X amount of business from this or, or like. So I'm, I was curious if you had delved into when I say it at, at this red carpet, it gets more recognition or publicity than when I say it at that red carpet. Oh, like, uh, I mean, no, not really, because I'm yeah. not, I don't even like, you really don't follow care it. about like, social after, media. Yeah, after I just you... have to have it because of what I do. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Right. I'm not very good at it because you should really post a lot to have people <laughs> always. Yeah. I think my last post was like a month ago, you know? Yeah. And uh, so, no, I don't really follow that. So I don't know how you don't do ever that. feel the obligation then to to be your own like publicist? cheerleader publicist no because i'm from a different era mm -hmm. do you know like yeah. where it wasn't it didn't matter how many followers you had that's never affected me like i know it affects the younger actors that's what i've heard like the really really young actors but that's not my world you know so i don't even let it creep into my mind because it's like that'll drive you crazy. Like I heard my daughter on one day at a time, she'd be like, oh, my God, this, you know, this girl has a million followers. And it's like, have you ever seen Black Mirror? Did you see that episode of The Followers? Oh, uh, I didn't you know, see that oh, my one. God, you got to see that show. It's so great. It's a great show. It's a great show. I just uh, I don't care, man. There's yeah. too much to care about. I'll drive myself crazy. And the studios, from your perspective, don't they don't care either for, based Not on for you because you have the talent. Right. Yeah. They already know you. But they would, yeah. I think, for, for the some younger people. generation. Yeah. yeah. I think it's important for the younger generation. I mean, look at all the people that do the movies. But then I don't think the movies do that well. I got to be honest. You know, the influencer. I mean, they do good on like things like Dancing with the Stars. You know, but I don't know if they can. How you know. was your time on that show? It was it was a lot of work. Heather and I were talking about that. It was a lot of work. It seems like a boot camp. Like it seems yeah, like these people was. are working out a lot. I mean, they're getting injured. Yeah. Uh, oh my God. I'm like, what is injured. happening with these injuries? Like how <laughs> bad is this thing? Like because how you're, am I? You're dancing every day. Every That's too every much. Day. Yes, I know. Right? I figured that out. I was like, this is But is this it is crazy. it like the show making you or is it like your partner, the person you're paired with just wants to get this so dialed in? It's the it, it's the dancers. It's the dancers. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Because, because it, the show always says to you, this is the this is what the show says. And by the way, I, I love Dina Katz. I love everybody over there. They were really wonderful during a time where the pandemic had just started. And, uh, you know, I was super depressed and I didn't know. I was like, oh, this sucks. Why? And why? Then, why? Because Hollywood stopped or what? everything. I yeah. mean, it wasn't even so much work. It was like, what was going on? No, the one day I was on the talk doing the talk. The next day I was like mm. uh, buying a Peloton yeah. <laughs> like the rest of That's the world. Funny. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> and so literally, I was like, what's happening? So uh, when they asked me to do it, I said, yes, I'd rather be doing that every day than than lying in my bed. And I was really depressed. And so, but the show says you can dance as much as you want to dance, rehearse as you, but okay. you know, you you get yeah. in you there. Win, you want to win. You want to win, you know, yeah. so you say, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the dancers really want to win. So yeah, yeah, there was a lot of dancing. It's like a workout and a half every oh day. Oh my God. How many hours a day much. do they put you guys through? Well, the good thing is that there, because it was the beginning of COVID, we couldn't just do anything. They had to like, we could only do three hours or four hours a day. Only three? Yeah. Oh my God. These dancers would do, before what? COVID, did like seven, eight oh hours. They could God. do ho however long they How wanted. How old are these people? I know. That I, by the way, Nellie and I were like the oldest ones. Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> that we made it to the finale, myself and Nelly. He won, right? No, no. Who won Bachelorette. Oh, okay. Caitlin Bristow. Yeah, she won. And then the catfish guy was second. Uh, I forget his name. Uh, oh, Nev. Nev. Yeah, 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 yeah. He was yeah. great. He yeah. was a good guy. And then Nelly was third, and then I was fourth. Okay. Yeah. What did you notice career-wise after, after the show? Um, that a lot maybe, of people watch it. A lot of people watch it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's a juggernaut. I had this one person tell me something, which I thought I don't know how to respond to this. He's like, "Oh, my my stepmother is the most racist woman in the world, and she was watching it, and she just fell in love with you." I'm like, "Okay, I don't know what." So to is say. her racism did, cured? Did I change her? Yeah, right. Did I change the I think lady? You changed her. I think you solved racism I, like, by <laughs> dancing. 
with the stars. That's Should the I answer, it? everyone. <laughs> um, it actually, it did, it does a lot for you, That's to be honest. Show. It really yeah. does a lot for you. You wouldn't think it does, but, you know. Especially if you make it deep. Yeah. yeah. Especially mm-hmm. if you make I mean, it as Mario far as Lopez, I Mario Lopez, it seemed like he oh, was resurrected. God. Oh, yeah. Now, complete, right? Complete. I love that guy. He's I a love great guy. He's a great guy. I loved him then. Yeah. I love him more now. But it's like that show really took him to a place totally. of like, he was everywhere all of a sudden. Everywhere. And that's what happened. And I think it's nice if you dance well. Yeah, and he was a great dancer, Mario. I think it's basically a show for Latinos, to be honest. Yeah, you yeah. put a Latino on that show, they're yeah, going to do well. Yeah, but there's not that many Latinos. I they know. need more Latinos. And you they know what else more. they need? And I say this. They love doing the rumba, the salsa, right. cha-cha-cha. Where's, where's the Latino dancer? Exactly. Where Where is your... La- you need to bring that in, you know? And yeah. I've said that before, because that's they love the Latin dances. It looks good on TV. Yeah, it exactly. Sells. It's sexy. Yeah. So what happened after Dancing with the Stars? Uh, I don't know what happened after Dancing with the Stars. I can't remember. It doesn't it feel like it's been ten years from twenty 2020 twenty to twenty twenty two? It does, yeah. I don't know what happened. I just started working and I did a couple movies and then I the and then I did the pilot for the horror of Dolores Roach last year for Amazon and Blumhouse and then they picked it up and then that's what I've just I just finished uh shooting it on Saturday. Give people a sneak peek. What is it? Oh God, it's just I'm really bad at explaining it right now. But it's <laughs> a like crime thriller. I'm, well, it's it's funny. It's like a new genre. It's like it's almost like a Barry, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, great yeah. show. So oh, that's such a God. great show. So she's in jail for 16 years after selling weed. She gets set up by her boyfriend, and um, she comes out. Washington Heights is completely gentrified. She doesn't know anybody. She walks into this empanada shop, and the same kid that had a crush on her when he was like 13 is running it. And, you know, uh, he gives her a place to stay and she starts uh, killing people and he starts making empanadas out of it. <laughs> I'm making it, but you wait, know, wait, that's wait. really that's why, okay, what? Now I'm getting the Sweeney Todd reference. Yeah, that's what, I, yeah, that's what it okay. is. So yeah. it's, yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. What? That, that, and this took a very so dark funny. turn. It's so funny and it's dark uh, and it's again. crazy. Yeah. That's and up. it's, um and you know, it's like, and you, you read this, it's you're kind like, of like a stoner me. comedy also because, you know, um, yeah. I did, I read it right away and I thought, because I could kill people. No. I just thought that, you know, when have you seen a woman of color have that kind of role you know yeah. it's always a white man you know not even a white woman yeah. it's always like That's you true. know the serial killer that, is always yeah white. walter you know breaking bad i loved breaking bad you know dexter and i just thought how exciting to be that, to have that person to do it you know yeah. do you ever have a dream project maybe as a, a writer producer yourself I or a dream role maybe it's funny because people ask me that and I don't no I don't think I have a dream role I think that I've been really lucky you know uh 20 well I shouldn't say lucky because I worked hard but like 20 years or more than 20 years ago I I got six feet under and that was that revolutionized television and then you know I got to play this fabulous character Penelope Alvarez on one day at a time with Rita Moreno and that was uh, and then this I think is gonna be something so I think that I think I've, you know, I've always been really picky about what I do, even when I didn't have any money. I didn't want to do stuff that was a stereotype. I didn't, unless, unless, because stereotypes do exist sometimes, right. unless it's layered and unless yeah. the, the person there's, there's is doing something, there. you know? Yeah. I don't want to just be Lupe, you know? Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lupe the housekeeper? <laughs> you know it. Lupe the housekeeper. She you cleans know? the house si pretty senor, well. Though, she's so... like, how do you doing? You know? I didn't want to just do that. That's what I loved about I Love Lucy. Oh God, I loved Diamond. Because it was like a woman and a and a Cuban guy. Yeah. And like that that it. to me at the time was like, imagine. Right? Right. Like people don't I don't know, I think they miss it. I think they don't understand when they're watching it. You know, I think now today it's like holy crap, how yeah. progressive was that? But right. that show was bananas. Have you seen the the documentary? They have so many great documentaries yeah, on it on I Amazon. Mm-hmm. They really do. And it talks you know that Desi Arnaz is the one that it, that invented four cameras yes. for the sitcom. That was he, Desi Arnaz. He also Arnaz. Uh, had the um, yeah. what was it? The residuals. He more or less invented like and uh, residuals. residuals. Yeah. yeah. So Desi Arnaz. What does that was, mean? What does four cameras mean? Well, okay. So when you do a sitcom, they used to be film. It's not film anymore. They have four cameras because you're on. It's flat. You're just like on a stage. You know, you have the audience and then you're here. So in order for them to get every angle. Mm. They have four cameras, and okay. Desi Arnaz is so the one. So before that, nobody did that. So before that, nobody Single did camera. that. It was his idea. See, we need eight cameras in the podcast. Yeah. Studio. We need to be the first one to <laughs> have eight cameras. It was his idea. That's amazing. We're gonna have every angle imaginable. Mm-hmm. Well, so and with the residuals, Desi uh, did it as a result of Lucy being pregnant, and so they couldn't go on the air anymore. Reruns. And so he was like, uh, "Reruns." That's thank what you. it was. Yeah, 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 thank you, reruns. And so because she was pregnant, and couldn't go on the air anymore. He was like, "Well, I have been sitting on this footage. I own it." 
not the studio they owned it so what they did was like they were they like well it. let's replay it and and at the time right. no one knew that sounds like a that bad was, idea oh, and but, at the time yeah. no one had done that before yeah. like will people tune in for this and it was such a hit and so he kind of rewrote how the industry operated after that with the ability of of rerunning ip that they had already invented I love that show. I'll still yeah. watch that Same. show. Yeah. I used to watch that before I went to bed every night. Oh, that was, I love that. Such yeah. a good show. I want to make a movie about my mom, my mom's life. Because I, I think like she plays all the stereotypes, but then it's it's the ultimate success story. Yeah. It's the ultimate like moving to America, single parent. Like I was watching Care Bears while she was cleaning a motel. Right. Right. Yeah, and then how she got like a job. And then like at that time, the American dream was like your kids go to college. Yeah. And then it's like us graduating college and like where we are today. But really like her fighting through all these hurdles. Yeah. I want to make that movie. It's a great story, man. I want to make that movie. Those stories are always great. And they, they never. Yeah. And there's plenty of them, The human for sure. condition. But it's, it's awesome. Everybody loves to see that, you yeah. know? You want to play my mom? Sure. Done. We, we gonna, inked it. We're gonna we like, inked it. That I was too easy. I got to get the Peruana accent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> From your view in the world of Hollywood, how do you, what do you think like Latinos need to either be successful maybe get to get like how do, how do we change the thing like the thing that's a problem today we just keep talking about it we just keep uh getting people in, in uh positions that are are more powerful you know uh, you we have i mean my old boss she's one of the best gloria calderon kellett i mean she's just doing everything to move us forward eva longoria america ferrera i can go on these women are really doing stuff you know so we just keep doing that and that's all I could really say I don't it, it's it's a constant fight it's a constant fight and I and I think what I like about the younger generation that's here now is that they're not scared you know like when I was working when I started out you really couldn't say anything because then you'd be fear of never working again you know of somebody blackballing you blacklisting you and now because of social media because of so many movements that doesn't really happen. So I do like that everybody is really talking about it. You know, and that's the way it changes, you know, but we also have to support. Like that's I have the so thing, many right? friends I that I feel like say, this is where it drops yeah, off. Yeah, because they'll say like, oh, I saw that show was stupid. And I said, let me ask you something. Wait, How come show? Latinos, oh, I don't know what to say because my friends <laughs> yeah. have been, I mean, all my friends are on all the shows, you know, the Latino shows. And I, but the thing is, is that uh, why can't we have, okay, maybe it's not the greatest, but why can white people have every stupid show around? Why does ours have to be so incredible? Let's, you know, let's just make it basic. Let's make let's start but somewhere let's support and build. It. Let's support it. And then there'll be another and then there'll be another. And then, you know, like one day at a time. That was brilliant. I mean, it was and not just because I was on it. It was like a brilliant show. Yeah. You know, I look at Goldita Chronicles that got rave reviews and it got canceled. HBO decided that they weren't going to do uh, family programming anymore. So uh, Gordita Cr Chronicles just got canceled. Baker and the Beauty uh, was one season got canceled. Uh, you know, it's just, I mean, I'm glad that Rosalind's show is doing great. Fantasy Island. Fantasy Island? I haven't you know, watched that one. Yeah, it's, I always loved Fantasy Island. You never saw Fan the reruns of Fantasy Island with uh, Ricardo Ru Montalban? Montalban? He's like taboo. He's like, the plane, the plane. The, yes. <laughs> Yeah, old, old it's old. show. It's from the it's yeah. from the seventies and eighties. Yeah, I used to watch that and the Love Boat and all like it was like a lineup: Fantasy yeah. Island and the Love Boat. I think from my perspective, we had Avenida's Productions in here, and what the thing they're doing, they're creating like this, almost like an incubator where they're they're providing funds for script writers. Yes, and a so lot of people starting, are doing that. Yeah, yes. and they and they also built out their own studio, mm -hmm. and so it's like they have a bodega and they have all the things. Oh, that's cool. In like a studio. I don't know who they are. Who I mean, that Productions. Yeah. They're, they're pretty close. Yeah. We had them on the podcast. We can connect for this to you after too. this. But I would love to know who they are. They're also are. starting yeah. this like uh, streaming service aimed at Latino shows and programming. I would love programming. to know who they are. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. And so we, you know, but it's like, okay, you have that part. And but when we talked to them, the whole thing was like, we need people to tune in, though. Like we ha we need yeah. the Latinos to vote with yeah. their eyeballs. Yeah. And you know, that's the thing. That's that. That's not the only. That's thing, not the only thing. But but, it, but it is that's a how big they thing. viewed it. Yeah. But it is a big thing. They're right. But it's not the only thing. You know, because. They also have to give shows an opportunity. Another thing that happens is that the studios don't put any money into marketing. Yeah. They put no money right. into They'll it. They'll do all the rest of it. Yeah. yeah. So then and they're then... like, oh, it failed. Well, of course it failed. You know, like back in the day, they would put you, uh, you know, on a talk show. Or if, if, if it was an ABC show, then you'd be on whatever late night show was that show. They're not even doing that. Right. So, so then yeah. does it become prescient to use your social media platform? 
Uh, in, in uh, yes, that yeah. no, but that's true. But right. but see, but me, it's not that's not gonna happen because I'm not gonna do it. You know what so, I mean? So even though even like, though you know, like you are, is it because like you, you just because I'm not touch good it. at yeah. it, man. Because I'm not yeah. good at it. Hire somebody. Like, just hire <laughs> someone to do it. That's true. But then I'm a control freak, you know. Yeah, right. and I'll be like, I'll be a micro, be like, you know, micromanaging stuff. So um, no, I think that of course, yes, it. it comes down to us but also i'm working for blumhouse and amazon and you know they're two powerhouses so i'm sure that you know that they're going to do it and i'll do my part of course are there a lot of latino executives like in those leadership positions no no that's that's probably problem one exactly yeah it's all of those those are all the problems yeah Yeah. well listen we heard it's your birthday coming up yes it is yeah september 6th yeah you know it we got your little Uh, cake coming uh, here we had to do it to you so happy birthday for to you from the podcast, from oh, our yes. listeners, from Cat Footwear. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Very welcome. Oh my goodness. Thank All you right, for I'm, coming on the podcast. I'm gonna make a wish, guys. Hold on. Please yeah. do, please do. It's for the movie. We'll check in with you later to see if it came true. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> I hope it does. Thank you, Justina. Thank yeah, you thank guys. you so much for coming on the show. It. Thank you. Happy birthday. Thank yeah. you. If you made it this far, I bet you loved the episode. So you should join our YouTube channel membership for only $2.99 a month. This gets you access to one, the whole unabridged conversation. Two, you get the episodes on Monday, one day earlier. Three, you get two additional entries to our giveaways. Check out our Instagram to see what we've given away. And four, you get access to seasons one through three. That's over 100 episodes of wisdom and life-changing advice. What are you waiting for? Join.